It wasn't made for you, it was probably made for me. When Seed Studio released the re-terminal, they've promised a really cool device for makers that will be able to do a lot. And in my initial review, I've examined the re-terminal, how cool it is, and shortcomings mainly being a lack of USB 3.0 ports, which came with the promise of exposed PCI Express port. So that's video, it's there. But there was one problem with this promise. The add-ons to re-terminal were nowhere to be found. Up until now, because today, today I have Returminal E10-1. It's a really nice name, isn't it? It's a first add-on from Seed Studio that simply latches on to the back of the Returminal and expands the functionality of the original panel. And just like Returminal itself, it really won't charm you with its design. It's blocky, it's not really comfortable to hold in your hands, Basically Spartan and industrial, but it's not what it's all about. It's all about the connectivity and expanding options and this thing has, well, some of it for sure. When I first removed the silicon cover from the port at the back and, uh, well, joined them both together, I kind of expected satisfying click or sound or noise or anything really. None of that happened. In fact, you had to use two screws to secure the back add-on in a position to make sure it won't get disconnected from the proprietary port. Oh, speaking of slight disappointment there. But it works, it stays in a place and, well, it's not going anywhere. Now, the E10-1 is actually thicker than the re-terminal itself, which makes the whole sandwich quite bulky. Now, you're probably not going to end up holding it in hands, it has enough screws to mount it anywhere you want, and that's going to be a panel statically displaying the information and connecting to uh, whatever devices you have in plan. And when I say connecting, I mean connecting, because there are a lot of I.O. that we can take advantage of. First of all, we have additional Ethernet port. It's not just a simple Ethernet port, but this is a PoE, which means you'll be able to power entire thing through the Ethernet. Next to it is a 12 volt DC power jack to, that you can use to actually power the device and charge the internal batteries. That's right, inside you'll find 18650 two cell batteries to keep your device operational too. Switching to the other side reveals very industrial backbone on connectivity, meaning the uh, 9D sub uh, RS232 and very typical 6 pin connector for RS485. And if RS485 isn't enough and you fan of a CAN bus, then you can use those terminals to actually connect your CAN device and speak to it this way. We're pretty much done on the outside, so let's open it up because there is a plenty to talk about this add-on on the inside as well. Seed Studio delivered on the promise of delivering PCIe port inside of the add-on. You'll be able to either connect PCIe cards or M.2 storage to expand the storage of the entire bundle or sandwich even further. I mean, the Red Terminal already has EMMC storage to run your OS, but if you want, you can either take advantage of M.2 in SATA configuration or actually host a system on it to even speed up further your device. The M.2 port in a key B supports two configurations, which is 2242 and 2280. And while installing one of my uh, memory modules, I discovered a very small toggle. Unfortunately, you'll have to pick between either having M.2 SSD or utilizing that PCIe port for further expansion boards. But the feature journey isn't over just yet. We have a SIM card support, more on that in a moment, uh, two microphones to take the voice input or sound input to your device, and a speaker. And in case it gets toasty inside and you want to uh, cool either your M.2 SSID or PCIe card, you can use GPIO controlled fan to keep interior cool. But this is where things get a little bit weird. Because, well, actually, when you look at the re-terminal E10-1, it is an add-on already. And that add-on introduces you to more add-ons to add extra functionality, like using 5G via PCIe or LoRa 1 support. And 
At this point, you have to just sit down and think about what you're doing because you're actually adding an add-ons to the add-ons so you could add it to your terminal, which, you know, it sounds a little bit silly. At this point, you also have to be aware of a full specification on the product page. It will give you an option for the support for LoRaWAN, etc. However, these modules aren't included in a package and you'll have to pay for them separately. And some of them are quite expensive, so bear that in mind. I think all my remarks about the Reterminal E10 One won't encourage you to buy one unless you are very specific about the use cases. And, to be honest, that's okay, because this device isn't made for you. While Reterminal itself was somehow marketed to makers as this really cool device that can be used to realize your projects and ideas, the very first expansion board, this E10-1, isn't really what the makers are looking for. This add-on serves another purpose. It's made for heavy-duty industrial automation and a person like me actually will appreciate this. If it isn't made for you, why is it made for me? Well, my official job title is a robotics engineer and we make bespoke robots for various industries. In the world of industrial automation, everything runs on 24 volts for some reason we use RS 485 or 232 and CANBOS instead of other protocols. And this is exactly where this add-on shines. And while there are other ways to interact with all those peripherals, well, you have to say that using uh, E10-1 is pretty cool. And yes, you could use a small Arduino or another development board to test something quick to make sure your industrial machine is working. Well, Trying makeshift controllers on a very expensive robot is, well, generally frowned upon, however exceptions do happen. In my case, as the shortages are quite real, and for example I'm assigned to build two robots right now, which I know already I won't be able to complete due to shortages until February 2023, this gives me an opportunity to build a robot, finish it and test individual components of a RS485 to make sure that the platform is fully working while I'm awaiting for the brains of my robots to arrive later on this year. And could I test these any other way? Yeah, but uh, you have to say that using this to do it, it's probably one of the coolest ways to verify that your project is ready to be completed. Some of you might bring the price of this test kit in a consideration because the three terminal itself is $200 and the add-on E10-1 it's another $109 on top of it. That assuming you're not interested in buying SSIDs or any PCIe expansion slots. But that's okay in a world of industry, we are used to it. It's not a foreign idea to buy a £350 crimper just to make sure your old connections are really nice and you don't have to spend a day troubleshooting with your wires. As this is a new product from Seed Studio, we don't see much in terms of projects and guides on how to use it. However, Seed Studio do have a wiki which you can access and look up the code for each specific interface and protocol and test it with your devices. Now, me personally, I have an idea in my head in which I would use the CAN bus on this device to connect to my car and download information about the a, fuel consumption, and then fuel levels, and link that with the API in the UK to get the latest fuel prices. That would enable me to create a dashboard which would display my speed of the car in pences per second. Because nothing takes your foot off the accelerator as seeing how much money you spend per second to drive this thing. So the first add-on from Seed Studio might not be for you. However, if you have a very specific use case scenario, you can use this platform to develop a very unique kit for your next project and take advantage of that. And if you like the sound of that, then in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link for both Reterminal itself and the Reterminal E10-1. They really have to rename it because it's, it's hard to, to keep mentioning it and you'll be able to purchase it yourself. So if you're interested and you want to find out how that car project is going to end up, then, well, uh, I do not have a posting schedule. You know how YouTube works and stay in touch. It gives you opportunity to click that subscribe button. No, I'm not doing that. Just use any social media to take advantage of the fact that you can uh, be in touch and follow progress on my various projects. 
Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Seed Studio for sending me Reterminal and the add-on as well. And I hope to see you all soon in my next video. Take care. Bye.